The paper of this session is uh, from Jens Peter Sandvik and, uh, and his colleagues at uh, NTNU, and it's on quantifying data volatility for IoT forensics with examples from Contiki OS. Hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, Jens Pesanvik and my co-authors is Katrin Franke, Abdo Moabi and André Ornes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a PhD student at NTNU uh, and in my spare time I work in, uh, with the Norwegian police in the Norwegian uh, cybercrime center. So today I'm going to present a paper on measuring volatility by using Contiki operating system as an example. Uh, here is the outline of the talk, uh, where I start to uh, describe Contiki and the file system, uh, present a model for the volatility in the file system, and show some experiments uh, using the code simulator, uh, and wrap up in the end though. So, uh, IoT systems are found everywhere today in everything, including smart homes and, and personal devices, industrial internet of things, and uh, smart manufacturing, environmental monitoring, smart agriculture, smart infrastructure, power grids, and so on. Uh, as the name suggests, the devices are internet connected either directly or going through a gateway. Uh, an IoT system spans quite a huge variety of devices from uh, like big clusters of servers running uh, cloud uh, subsystems to the tiniest devices with huge restrictions, both uh, power consumption and on size. Uh, since there are many types of devices with a variety of constraints, there is also a huge variance in the amount of memory and storage the device uh, contains. The interface uh, to these devices varies considerably. Some have ordinary storage devices uh, such as uh, SD cards uh, attached. Uh, some can be read with ordinary protocols while others have more obscure interfaces that require specialized tools or knowledge for acquiring the contents of the memory. Uh, the increased number of devices leads to an, an, an increased number of evidence locations. And um, together with the non-standard interfaces, this leads to, a, uh, leads to an increased resource demand if the data from all devices are to be collected in an investigation. If we can uh, predict which devices that are more likely to contain data, uh, the investigation resources can be better utilized. So. Uh, uh, from the background, uh, on the last slide, we see that one of the challenges is uh, to do a proper triage, uh, that is uh, de deciding from which device to collect evidence. Uh, and and, and uh, one of the challenges to do that is to predict which devices still have data in memory. Uh, the probability for evidence in a device is dependent on both the probability that the particular device has contained, uh, has contained the evidence and the volatility of the data, how, how fast the data disappears. Um, in this talk, uh, I will use evidence and data interchangeably, but uh, with evidence I mean data that can be used as evidence for strengthening or weakening investigation hypotheses. Uh, the three research questions for this uh, study was uh, how can the data volatility in IoT devices be analytically calculated, uh, and how can the data volatility in IOD devices be measured, and what are the differences between these two, <laughs> the, the, the analytical method and the measurements? How well does they correspond? So, let's see here. Um, so, uh, Contiki is an operating system for IOT devices and other resource constrained uh, devices that needs very little hardware to run. The operating system was first released in 2003 and has been under active development uh, since then. Uh, to support low-end hardware, uh, the OS footprint is approximately 100 uh, kilobytes and uh, uh, can run on as little as uh, 10 kilobytes of, of uh, RAM. It also comes with an emulator and simulator called uh, Koja, so that is uh, uh, shown here on, on the screen, the interface to that one. Uh, the emulator can emulate the hardware on which the OS image is running, and the simulator can simula simulate huge networks of nodes uh, um, and can connect uh, to the internet through, uh, through a gateway. 
In uh, this work, we mainly used the emulator to emulate uh, the hardware and uh, storage in single devices, uh, so we didn't uh, focus on the network part of it. Um, these protocols use uh, uh, IPv6. Uh, yeah. In addition, the, uh, the OS Contiki contains uh, IoT protocols, uh, especially those defined by the Internet Engineering Task Force through various requests for comments. Uh, these protocols use IPv6 as a single network protocol and it uses uh, IPv6 over low power wireless personal area networks uh, or 6 low PAN um, to send IPv6 packets uh, over physical networks that don't support a huge frame size. Uh, uh, 6 low PAN is uh, also used in thread and matter protocols that has kind of become more popular these days. Um, on top of uh, 6 low PAN, uh, Contiki supports also ro uh, a routing mechanism called Routing for Low Power and Lossy Networks, or RPL. Uh, and it uh, has built-in application protocols, uh, such as uh, the constrained, uh, constrained application protocol, Co-op, uh, MQTT, and uh, so on. Um, the file system uh, used for non-volatile storage in Contiki is called uh, the Coffee file system. It is a simple file system that is designed for flash memory storage. Uh, writing to flash memory needs uh, special attention, as bits can only be flipped from uh, uh, 1 to 0. Uh, this is done in a page write. However, to flip the bit back to one, a whole erase block has to be reset, and an erase block consists of several pages. In flash chips, typically used in the coffee file system, an erase block is 256 pages, and a page can be overwritten only if bits are changing from one to zero. So I can write a page several times, but only if I flip bits uh, in one direction. Um, uh, like, um, and this means also that data can be appended to a file without uh, creating new copies. Um, uh, like, uh, the file system contains very little uh, metadata, only 26 bytes, including the file name. And this uh, metadata is placed in a file header. Here, uh, at the bottom here, you see an example of a file header uh, that uh, the, it, it, uh, the top one starts at uh, the file content starts where it says file uh, three. <laughs> so the rest is the header. Um, and uh, yeah, so the file, uh, so any changes to a file when the file is written is uh, actually not written to the file itself, it is written to a log file. And uh, then this, uh, when the file system will interpret the data, it will take the content of the log file and, uh, and, uh, and swap the corresponding page in the, in the actual file. And uh, it, there are four pages uh, or four records in a log file that can, so every fifth write it will kind of copy the contents of, of the uh, base file and, and log file structure and write a new file. Uh, and when the file system uh, is full, the garbage collection uh, starts uh, and uh, tries to, to uh, erase uh, as much as possible, uh, or as man many uh, erase blocks as possible. Uh, it will scan the file system for non-active erase blocks. Uh, that means erase blocks that don't contain any active data. Um, and uh, when they have erased everything there, it will start from the beginning again and, and uh, write data to the, uh, to the system. Uh, since there are no static structures for metadata, there is uh, an inherent wear leveling in the file system operations. It's no uh, area that gets written more uh, than others. I won't go into more details of the file system here, but uh, if you're interested, uh, then you can see my paper on, on uh, coffee forensics uh, from the DFRBS US conference uh, last year. Uh, yeah, so what's uh, different between uh, Coffee and, and uh, VIAFs and X4? It's other 
popular file systems for for resource constrained devices um, and uh, a few examples uh, were showed in the top there uh, we have yet another flash file system x4 reliance nitro uh, the tree span file system xfat and so on it also uses ordinary kind of well known file systems and each all these file systems are made to solve a particular set of, of uh, criteria. Um, YAFS 2 is maybe the one that is more similar to coffee uh, in that it's uh, have a uh, uh, designed for flash memory. Uh, there are a couple of big differences uh, though. Uh, garbage collection is much more aggressive uh, as the file system driver will move active chunks of data that is uh, that is uh, still in in uh, sparse blocks to new blocks so the file system can erase even more blocks of data uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, copying and aggregation of active data from mostly deleted blocks into new blocks means that more of the deleted data will be erased when uh, the collector resets the erase block uh, the file system also contains more uh, metadata for files. It contains timestamp uh, when the file was modified, accessed and created, MAC times, owner data, file permissions and so on. Uh, YAFS 2 is used in many places, especially Linux-based systems and, uh, such as Android phones. Uh, but the recent popularity of managed flash uh, has made the uh, YAFS file system lose some popularity and X has actually gained uh, popularity instead in many like embedded uh, type of systems. Uh, that system is well known, made for ordinary hard disk, uh, and uh, the flash management system is, is uh, done in a, ma a managed flash controller. And uh, the flash controller shows, <coughs> sorry, shows the, the uh, file system just as a continuous uh, continuous uh, range of address. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, more centrally placed metadata structures such as uh, the superblock, uh, and uh, you also have the I nodes that contains links to the content data, and not kind of embedded together with the content data. And of course, X4 does not do garbage collection in uh, by itself. Um, uh, so it assumes it can overwrite any written page. So I need to get some uh, water. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, and uh, what is volatility? Uh, yeah, volatility is a term that needs to be defined a little bit before we're going to measure it. Most notable use of the word is, uh, is uh, used in the order of volatility. Uh, measures the relative, uh, uh, or it's a relative measure of how fast data disappears. Uh, this is a term used in most uh, books on digital forensics. Um, and we can also think of the volatility terms of the objective lifetime of the data. Uh, from the data is created until it's overwritten uh, or erased. Uh, another way of thinking of it in, term of, uh, in terms of the remaining lifetime of the data, um, uh, time from now uh, or any point in time actually until the data is erased. And of course we can also think of it in terms of probabilities, uh, that, uh, that it's the probability that data still exists at the time. Mm. Uh, uh, one of the advantages of being able to better predict the existence of data after a time is that the triage can be more precise as we can focus on devices that more likely contains data as not if you know that data probably already have been overwritten or, uh, or probably uh, exists still. <coughs> um, let's see. The lifetime of the data can be modeled as uh, the sum of, of uh, two individual periods of time. The first is the time the data is created on the device to the time it is unlinked or deleted from the file system. So see the first T delete there. Um, and uh, the next uh, uh, 
And the second is the period from the data is unlinked until it's actually overwritten or, or erased. Uh, so uh, in many ways we can think of the first period here, tdelete, as the period where the data is held by purpose. Uh, the application has a purpose by not deleting the data. And the second period is a period where the data is held by chance or kind of to, to the whims of the file system. Um, <clears throat> First period just depends on the application processing the data, uh, how long it will keep the data alive, and the second is dependent on the system running the application, how long it will keep uh, data before it uh, erases it. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, uh, and the acquisition method is of course important for which data is available for us. If you use logical acquisition, there is very unlikely that we'll see any of data uh, that is uh, still uh, exists uh, during the T-erase uh, phase here after the data is something. And if you use a physical acquisition, <coughs> yeah, we will uh, uh, probably see this uh, data that still exists during T-erase. Um, so, uh, just need to cough a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, got a dry throat now and uh, <laughs> speaking. Uh, so the volatility model uh, we use this itself is based on uh, described in our paper towards a generic approach of quantifying evidence volatility in resource constrained devices from last year. And a reference to that paper can be found in in this paper. Um, and this is the high-level perspective of the model. The first part of the model here, uh, defined as a six-tuple, is that uh, is the uh, let's see where was I in in, uh, in the manuscript here <laughs> uh, is the storage abstraction layers, or how the different ways data is encoded in the abstraction layers. Uh, a couple of examples that physical storage of the data is, uh, as charges on a chip can look quite different from the quasi-physical layer as read through the flash translation layer. And the data can be readable when read from the operating system, but unreadable when stored encrypted on a physical medium. The next is the events that affects the system, and thereby the volatility. Uh, then we have ac application activity function, uh, that is how the application handles the data and how fast it will delete it. M is the storage management function that process the data between the, the storage abstraction layers, and um, uh, this can be encryption, flash translation functions, uh, as we mentioned. Um, <clears throat> the device reliability gives an upper limit for the reli uh, reliability, and it's given us uh, D here, yeah, or uh, upper limit for lifetime, and it's given us D. At, le uh, at last, there is the operational environment that can affect the volatility, uh, which, of, which is of a more statistical nat nature than the individual events described earlier. Uh, we won't go into details of the whole model here, but rather focus on the storage management functions and how these affect uh, the volatility. The events and application activity functions are given in experiments, and the memory device reliability is not considered in, in this work as it's works on, on uh, simulated devices and thereby not, not anything that, uh, that uh, uh, have physical failures. Um, so uh, we first set out to see the time to first garbage collection. <coughs> oh. um, and uh, this is from the start when we start running uh, the system until until the first garbage collection runs uh, the file system is empty and we start start uh, writing files uh, and the time is given by the uh, write rate uh, um, the, or the, we have uh, have first inside the here that section ss and sn is the sec uh, sector size and the number of sectors divided by the kind of uh, File, uh, uh, file size, and the lower number of that plus uh, times the number of log file entries that are written in order to get the number of, of, uh, 
of rights before uh, the fall, uh, plus one because it's the last one that triggers the, the um, uh, garbage collection. And R here is the writing rate that is given as the, as the um, uh, harmonic sum of, of the individual writing rates. So that is uh, the, the, the kind of base uh, model. Um, and the uh, number of the writes is dependent on uh, 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 of files and their sizes and the number of sectors and the sector size. Minimum number of remaining uh, sectors are, are uh, uh, it can be left after a garbage collection is when all files are packed and the maximum number of sectors remaining after a garbage collection is when each file spans the most number of specter, uh, sectors. That will, for a small file, it will span two sectors each file. Uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, and uh, then you have kind of the minimum and maximum time, and that is kind of based on this uh, this uh, f expression I was show equation I showed the uh, last slide, but uh, with uh, with the less uh, less uh, sectors. So the maximum time a sector can survive is not longer than the longest writing time uh, or writing rate, uh, when the oldest file is written, the oldest sector is freed up to be garbage collected. Um, where TGC here is the inter-garbage collection time, and RMAX is the writing rate of the slowest writing file. Uh, uh, yeah, we see that uh, that uh, if we count the uh, units here, we see that the uh, T, T uh, sector is actually a rate also. But uh, uh, if we take the numerical example here, with the, with the uh, file system contain three files that is written on a, on a kind of one second per write, 50 second per write, and 1,000 second per write, we see that uh, like uh, 256 pages per sector uh, in uh, each sector, uh, that's 15 sectors and uh, 22 pages per file and four records. Uh, we get uh, that uh, it takes about, uh, like it should take about 635 and 408 seconds uh, between garbage collections and the maximum lifetime should be around 1270 seconds. Um, Oh, equals 22 there is just a typo from me. Um, and of course, all this this uh, uh, non non uh, uh, like the so ceiling and floor functions make it a little bit difficult to, to uh, kind of give exact uh, uh, results at least for um, my uh, mathematics background. So. Uh, and even for simple file system, there's a need for approximating volatility. So, so uh, we last slide we saw the maximum and minimum times for garbage collection, and uh, we don't really know the number of remaining pages for each run, so or garbage collection run. So we'll rather hide this uncertainty into a scaling factor that we denote by k here, and then we try to measure that uh, that uh, by observation instead. <coughs> <clears throat> to in the, the two in uh, the denominator here just is uh, uh, is the assuming a uniform distribution, and it could have been kind of put into the scaling factor here. Um, then uh, yeah, that uh, needs to be estimated experimentally, uh, but it should be the same for uh, variations of the writing rates. So, experimental setup. What did we do? <coughs> the experiments were performed to see how well the theoretical analysis matched the observed results. Uh, Contiki devices were set up as standalone devices, and each device had three applications that wrote one file each. We used the Koya simulator for this, as it comes with the Contiki operating system. The writing rate uh, of the files were chosen at random from a uniform distribution between one second per write up to 1,200 sec uh, seconds per write, so about 20 minutes uh, between writes. Each simulation run consisted of 16 devices and uh, was run for 10 days. Uh, uh, this was repeated 10 times with new uh, writing rates, new devices for, for every simulation run. Um, so in total simulation, uh, total simulation time for all nodes were thus uh, 1,600 days or about four years and four months. 
simulation time. It runs faster on the simulator though. One of the devices uh, crashed consistently every time uh, and was removed from the analysis. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, we, uh, uh, for us to figure out how long the written data existed in memory, we used uh, canary tokens. Uh, a canary token is just a special value that are monitored for access and, and uh, triggers some response when it is accessed. So in our case, the applications running on the devices were writing one token to its file for each writing operation. So I just set a 32-bit number to, to uh, be written to disk. And uh, uh, we had three applications writing like then three uh, different tokens, uh, one for each application. Um, and this made us possible to log the, both the process, uh, uh, which process that accessed uh, the timestamp, the time, and the file system location of the write. Uh, the two functions that were patched in the operating system uh, is both in the file uh, shown here. Uh, the function program page handles the writing of the page, and the function erase sector deletes the um, uh, erase block. Two parts of the lifetime of the data, as I mentioned earlier, can then be calculated uh, easily. Uh, T delete, the first part when, uh, when, uh, when uh, data is active, is the time from the token is written in a specific page to the time the token is written next time. Uh, because that invalidates the, the uh, previously written token. Uh, and, uh, uh, the erase can then be formed by subtracting the erase time from the uh, uh, writing uh, time in the same sector, so when it gets erased basically, giving us the whole lifetime of the page, uh, and that is T data, and uh, if we subtract T delete, we get T erase. So that's the kind of how, how we measured. Uh, so first we uh, verified that the writing rates that we programmed matched the observed values. This was done uh, by calculating the writing rate and compare it with the number of write operations in the log file. And uh, to our surprise, we, uh, there were about 20% error between the expected observation and shown here in the red line and the uh, observed one. And uh, of course, in the paper, I, I uh, speculate a little bit about uh, why this discrepancy exists. Uh, and uh, while writing these slides, uh, of course, I, I feel a little bit stupid now, but uh, I uh, thought, uh, or I uh, figured out that it was, be of course, because of, of the function of the file system that four writes uh, actually triggers five writes on disk. So. And this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, extra write is taken into account in the model, so it's uh, kind of not affecting the results, but it made uh, made uh, a little bit uh, headache to understand why this uh, happened. Though, <coughs> but uh, this uh, should not uh, doesn't affect any of the other results. So. Uh, garbage collection, uh, very consistent time used for garbage collection. It was uh, 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 very stable, uh, uh, around one minute, and uh, some outliers, the minimum time was 13 seconds, maximum was 33. And the number of retained uh, sectors was kind of a negative exponential distributed dish trend. You see that in the table here, where the number of sectors are here, and the logarithmic scale of, of uh, number of, of garbage collection runs that retained that number of, of uh, or deleted that number of, of uh, or retained that number of sectors. Uh, deleted, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, retained, I mean. <laughs> uh, retained because it's uh, one sector retained is most of the time, and uh, it's quickly decreasing. <coughs> <clears throat> so, uh, it was only one device that had more than five retained sectors, uh, much as well with, uh, with uh, that we thought it would uh, be six. Um, uh, but this device had up to 12 retained sectors, and we saw that uh, the one that, uh, where the garbage collection only lasted 30 seconds also matched the one where they retained 12, sec uh, 12 sectors, so it's very few sectors that we are, uh, where garbage collection there. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, minimum time between garbage collections were underestimated uh, with a median about 3.6 hours and, and uh, maximum time was also underestimated. So it was uh, clearly some, some uh, discrepancy in the, in the analytical model. Um, average lifetime, uh, I see I start to be, have to be finished soon, see something moving here. <laughs> Uh, average retention time for all pages were, were about seven hours and that is for, for a system that had maximum writing rate of, of 20 minutes per, per write. Uh, and the maximum time uh, was about five, hour, no, five days and eight hour, uh, nine hours. Um, and in the table here shows the result when I applied the scaling factor to the approximation. Um, it's not too, too bad. Uh, Point to half an hour, uh, 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 like min, uh, like half an hour wrong for the for the uh, most wrong uh, uh, device, and also <coughs> the distribution of lifetime of the pages for all pages for all devices combined is shown here, and with a logarithmic scale on the, on the vert uh, uh, vertical scale. Uh, so, uh, last analysis was uh, distribution of the lifetimes. We just tried to see if there was any matching uh, distribution uh, that could explain the data. It kind of, so this is two, two from two individual devices. The upper one is a typical one, the one we saw most of, uh, and the gray area here shows that uh, uh, the first is uh, like uh, calculate the time to, to uh, the garbage collection. Uh, between zero and, and TGC. And the second gray area is, uh, was where I just tried to figure where, where uh, or I divided the, uh, the time between garbage collection on the number of sectors and placed this, uh, the gray area on the third last one. And then it matches quite well. And uh, uh, except for the lower here where it's, uh, you see the two gray areas there also, but they're squished into the left uh, corner there. So this one was very at atypical and also con contained, uh, uh, had the data for a, for a very uh, long time. It, this was the one that contained data uh, for five days. Uh, we used the uh, common goals we know test to test uh, various distribution, but what, none, none really uh, fit anything. So it's not a simple distribution at least. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, thing we uh, didn't do was to look at other file systems. Uh, also this method kind of like we wanted to make something that was really easy to do for the uh, like uh, forensic investigator going out, uh, trying to figure out where this where the data might be. But of course, this model is not simple enough for it to be used uh, yet at least. Um, uh, maybe we need to generalize, uh, maybe uh, figure out a way to generalize uh, this. Um, so uh, we did uh, analytically estimate the volatility and we found a method for measuring the volatility for devices running contiguous. The same can probably be done with the other operating systems. And yeah, in the end we saw there were many special cases that the analysis didn't take into account. So that was everything from me. Thanks a lot, uh, Jens Peter. So, in the interest, ah, let's give him a hand. A, a hand. Thanks. So, in the interest of time, I think we'll take one question quickly from the audience and one from the online. So, any questions in the audience? Last one. First hand, I see. No. How about in the chat? How are we looking? Okay. Um, sorry, this is a, a running theme now. Um, I, I was wondering um, if you could, just, just for my understanding, help to bridge the conceptual gap a little bit between a sort of concrete understanding of data volatility in these IoT systems and then how this can be used sort of at a higher level, at a forensic level for, um, for, for evidence in, in cases yeah. and things. Uh, well, uh, the idea is that uh, this uh, can be one of the tools for, for uh, uh, deciding which system to, to uh, kind of investigate further, uh, like in, in uh, case you have like maybe uh, come to a uh, scene of crime, it's 
might be thousands of devices around an area. Which one uh, you have limited the number of, of, of uh, uh, resources available for doing this, uh, this investigation and you need to um, find which device or you don't have time or resources to, to kind of acquire uh, like everything, go to the cloud provider, figure out uh, who that is, you, fog systems, uh, figure out where those are, the individual nodes, figure out where those are and, and get the data out. So by, by at least have an estimation of, of how fast the data disappears from those devices, it's also easier to can, for example, say that, okay, I want to use to uh, uh, collect evidence from this device first because the data will disappear more quickly from this one than from that one. Or you can say that, okay, this one has been laying around so long, so it's probably, it's far over, it's, uh, it's a probable lifetime of data, so I don't really need to look into that one. Uh, I will focus on this one that more probably contain the evidence I'm looking for. So that was kind of the uh, background for this. Thanks.